Hi, welcome to the new Fly Fisher. My name is Bill Spicer and I'm your co-host. This week, muskie on the fly. Now this exciting fish isn't targeted very often by the fly fisher, but they do take flies and they take them readily. Joining me is river guide Glenn Hales, and today we'll discuss equipment, flies, presentation, and structure. I'll even give you a casting lesson on how to cast these big wind resistant flies. It's gonna be a great show, just full of excitement, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. That was awesome. They're extremely strong fish. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish. Good fish. Yes. Got him. Yeah! Oh, world record. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a good example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat. Sweet music. Sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. The new Fly Fisher crew is fly fishing on the Trent River system just outside of Belleville, Ontario. Our guide for today is Glenn Hales, a photographer for the Canadian Fly Fisher magazine. Glenn's vast experience with taking muskie on the fly will be invaluable today as we search for this elusive game fish. Pontoon boats are the same as any other watercraft, making approved flotation devices necessary to be on board. Check your local, state, or provincial regulations. It's never recommended to fish alone in remote areas. The buddy system allows you to share the experience of the outdoors with somebody else while remaining safe. Pontoon boats are becoming very popular among fishermen these days, whether for fly fishing or spin fishing. They are lightweight and easily set up for launching. There is no need for a ramp, unlike other boats. They are quiet in the water and are easily maneuvered. Sneaking up on the fish is no problem for these craft, which is critical for certain species like muskie. Fly casting from them is very easy as you are higher over the water as compared to float tubes or U-boats. The two-person model we are using today can carry up to 700 pounds and is extremely stable even in fast water. Resources available to people who want to fly fish for muskie are very limited. There is some material available on the internet, but one of the best sources of information is contained in Barry Reynolds' book, Pike on the Fly. The muskellunge, or muskie as it's commonly known, is the largest of the pike family and can grow to incredible sizes. Females grow faster and bigger than males do. Growth rates depend on the amount of available food, the size of the body of water, and the summertime water temperatures. Lunker muskie can grow to 45 to 50 inches long and weigh between 35 and 50 pounds. The world record muskie caught with a rod and reel is a whopping 69 pounds 11 ounces caught by Louis Spray in 1949. Muskellunge normally live in lakes and slow moving rivers with clear water and numerous underwater weed beds. They prefer cool water where temperatures stay below 26 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but they can endure temperatures as high as 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit for a limited time. Muskies most often reside in water less than 15 feet deep. After three days of rain, the weather finally broke and we had a typical southern Ontario hot and humid August day, perfect for muskie fishing. Muskies uh, would like to lie in certain areas like uh, deadfalls where trees have fallen into the water, um, wood debris, they like to hang out there. Um, even sh uh, shadow where a tree is overhanging is a good place for muskies to lay. Any clumps of lily pads that are all in a nice spread out area, it's a great ambush point for muskies. Um, coontail, if you find a good patch that's actually really choked together, muskies like to lie in there and again another ambush point. Uh, other certain types of weeds, uh, grass weed with a little channel that's in it, uh, muskies will lie right in there and sit there and wait for their prey. So anywhere where there's a good vantage point for yeah. an ambush, yeah. that's what you're looking for. Yeah. I find that uh, August is a pretty good month. Uh, water levels are a little low and weed structure is actually 
more, there's more weeds, and it's better cover for more for the monkeys. How about uh, flies? Now we 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 mainly honed in on two that we like. One a red and white, and you have a black on. Uh, let, tell me a little bit more about what other flies we might use. Uh, you probably could use as uh, poppers, surface baits, um, big deer hairs. Big big stuff. Big though. stuff. Yeah. Um, color. I don't think it really matters because these fish are really aggressive, and if they want it, they're gonna grab it. Now now we're we're really using heavy equipment. Uh, <clears throat> what's the reason for that? Um, mainly for the flies themselves, they are bulky and wind resistant, so a good heavy stout rod mm -hmm. casts them really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to, to jump around a little bit, when you do get lucky enough to hook up on one, um, now I, I've recently done it only because I've done some, some saltwater fishing, they call it bowing to the fish. Can you talk a little bit more about why you bow to the fish? Uh, you pretty much bow to the fish so that when the fish does jump, it enables them to not throw the hook out. Mm -hmm. Instead of pulling the yeah, line through the water, exactly. the line the shoots, line shoots the water. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very important when you're fighting a big fish like that. That's very powerful. When they do jump, put the rod down. It's called called bowing to the fish. So the line shoots straight instead of pulls up, and uh, the the hook shouldn't come out of the fish's mouth. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, any other things you want to add to that, Glenn? Oh, let's just get fishing. Okay. <laughs> Our first tactic of the day is to use topwater flies such as poppers. Simply cast a likely cover and on the return retrieve simply use a jerking motion with the rod tip to pop the fly on the surface, creating a gurgling sound. The strike using this method is usually quite spectacular and will get your heart pounding. Had a follow up. He come right below the fly, took a look at it and then went back down. So hopefully he'll come back for it. Coming right out of the Lily pad. The lily pad there. I see the, the minnow behind it, so he's still around. Yeah. One jack actually jumped out of the water. Oh, there he there is. There we go. Fish on. All Excellent. right. Oh, and he oh. let go. Oh, that was that was awesome. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> After numerous attempts to take a fish on top with a popper, and with only one strike, we decided to change tactics. We opted to go with a large subsurface streamer fly. Like using a surface pattern, this type of fishing is really exciting because you will often see the muskie attack your fly. Now the retrieve we use on this is fairly simple, nothing, nothing fancy. It's a longer strip retrieve. What you do is you just strip in a fast motion like that, almost jerking it fast, about a two foot strip, just like that. And what that does, it imparts a little bit of action on the fly like this when you jerk it. And it seems, the, the fish seem to like it. I'll just show you one more time. There, jerking motion like that. Long strip jerk motion. You don't have to do anything with the tip, just strip it straight back in like that. And we don't have to wait for the fly to sink so much because the fish are not afraid at all to come up to the top and grab the fly. Not afraid at all. They're not leader shy and they're really aggressive. Now the way to cast these heavy flies, you don't want a tight loop. What you want to do is what's called a, a oval cast or a Belgian cast. That's out to the right and over top, out to the right, over top, out to the right, over top. You do not want a tight loop on this because the fly drops below the line and you end up with a tailing loop and a big knot or you might hit yourself. So go out and over top, out, over top, out, over top. And you can get quite a, a long cast doing this. Okay, I gotta get this line up on the reel. Had some fallen rocks over here that I placed it in there. Oh yeah, all right. These are extremely strong fish. Oh yeah, good fish, good fish, yes. Yeah, I have a, uh, 
a strip leech on. And I was, there's a fallen raw wood pile here. Oh yeah. Gotta get him away from that wood pile. Oh, this is a good fish. Oh yeah. Oh, and he let go. Oh. <laughs> well, that, was, that wasn't expected. I thought I had him hooked well enough. As you see, these are quite exciting fish. You have to really give them respect when they're fighting. Obviously, I didn't give it quite enough respect. But anyways, that's, that was just incredible. Oh, man. I lost the fish earlier, and I felt that it was because of a dull hook. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I've just tied on a new, new fly. I think it's really important, especially with these larger flies, to sharpen the hook. I've just got a, 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 a fish hook here, a fish hone, I should say, that I've bought in a local fly shop. Uh, they're not very expensive, but they're worth having. Just all you have to do is got a little groove in it here, and all you do is take your hook, fit it in the groove, and move it up and down a few times. Doesn't take much, and you can feel, oh yeah, this, this one's very sharp now. You can feel the difference it makes. But, so these hook hones are worth having. having. They, uh, they're good for any size hook. Ah, just a little one. <laughs> just a little one. Going after a big streamer. Going after the big streamer, yeah. It's a small mo. Just a small, small mo. Now, that is really something. This is this is a very brave fish. <laughs> and let's bring him up here. Come on, aggressive. Very aggressive little small mo. <laughs> very aggressive. Not too bad. Sometimes any fish will do. That was good. Let's try that again. The system that I'm using today is a nine foot number nine weight rod. Reason being is the large flies that we're throwing today are very wind resistant and you need something heavy enough to throw them. It's not so much for the fish, the fish aren't very large around here, but it's more for the flies. We're using a floating line. Uh, we haven't had a need to use a sink tip line or a sinking system all, at all. The water's not that deep and the fish seem to be willing to come up to the top. Glenn, what are you using? Um, again, I'm using a, a nine foot six, nine weight weight forward floating line with a braided leader. Pretty simple system. Uh, you don't have, you don't have, don't have to get fancy with this. Uh, we are using a bite tippet of braided line, which uh, we don't, you don't have to use steel so much anymore. The braided lines are, are pretty tough. Uh, the, the, the fish don't seem to be biting through them. And the flies that we're using, we've been using some poppers and we've been using some strip leeches and both have produced strikes uh, on either fly. Uh, one particularly violent strike that we had that the fish come right out of the water, which was very exciting. So again, a number nine, nine foot rod. He's right below the boat. Straight at mine. Straight over here. He opened his mouth again and did the did same he? thing. Nice thing about these boats that you can get right up on top of them without disturbing them. Good one, Glenn. <laughs> Just small, a little small, eh? Yeah? 
Come out in the middle of nowhere, huh? Yeah. Very good. Very good. I was just casting over there to some lily pads and stripping it. And the fish just came out of a great depth. Probably about eight feet, came straight up and just hammered it. It was lightning fast and down wow. it went. It's really got a good bend in your rod there, oh, doesn't yeah. it? Very good. Oh yeah, got a lot of spunk in there. Yep. Oh, it's a good size one, bud. Yep. Good size one. That's wonderful. This I, is got to be some of the most exciting type of fishing I've ever done in my life. The, the, the hit is extremely hard and aggressive. Ooh. They're very colorful too. Yeah. You think he's ready? Nope, he's not ready. <laughs> oh, oh, got off. What? Oh no. Yeah. Lose it? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's too bad. Shoot. Well, better check your hook. Yeah. Might be dull. Might be dull. Oh, that's too bad. That's a good fish. That's a good fish, yeah. That's a real nice fish. Got to get him on the reel, right by the lily pads. Oh man, strong fish, and he's gonna jump soon in a minute. There he comes. Here he comes up. I'm gonna keep the tension on him this time. Extremely That's fast take. I am so surprised at how fast they commit themselves. That red and white. Streamer. Red and white seems to be what they wanted right now. Oh man, big head shakes. Big head shakes. He's staying down, which is unusual for a muskie. They generally, they generally jump quite a bit. And if he jumps, I'm gonna bow. Here to comes. Him. Here comes. Go. That's a nice. Put the fish. rod down when he jumps. It's a good fish. Don't hold your rod up high when he jumps. I have to tire this guy out. Very, very. Ah, oh man, incredibly fast take. You know, it's just a blur with a fish coming by when you see him take. I'm gonna tire him right out. Now, Glenn, can you do the honors for me? And yeah. once I get him tired, show him, show it to the camera. Oh. He's gonna jump. If he jumps, I, I bow. Okay, get him out of that Let's weed keep, patch. I'm keep bring you back out, out yeah. of the weeds. These are incredibly strong fish. It's very exciting. Everything you've read about them is true. Getting there. He's getting there, yeah. He's starting to get tired. He's, he's got a good hook set on him. He's got a good hook set, yeah. I'm gonna go all the way around. Okay, I'll need to bring him right around. Good fish. Still got spunk in them too. Yeah. Incredibly strong. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what it's all about, that's for sure.
Very good, Glenn. <laughs> that is what it's all about. <laughs> Folks, almost gone a fly. This is my first musky on a fly. I've caught musky before, but this is my first one on the fly. I'm very excited about it. Okay, Glenn, let's uh, get the hook out of him. Oh, I had him good. He uh, he inhaled that, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yes, if I could. He's pretty slimy. I uh, just hope I can. Whoa! And away he goes. There are numerous organizations in the U.S. and Canada that are dedicated to the promotion and protection of muskies. Two such organizations are Muskies Inc. in the U.S. and Muskies Canada. You may wish to search the web to discover more about these organizations. Their normal prey includes all types of bait fish and species such as bass, walleye and trout. They will even cannibalize their own young if the opportunity is present. As the muskie grows in size, so does their protein requirements, which translates into the need to use larger flies. We're back at our put-in point here, and as you can see, we had a good day with lots of action. Now it's a different thing to land the fish than it is to have them on. It's pretty difficult to land them. They're very, very strong fish. Thanks to Glenn for being on the show today. For more information on today's show and other shows that we have, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.